So we continue where we left off after Mina was able to save Kafka from getting his core crushed by Kaiju number nine. And the beginning of the new chapter, we start off with a flashback where we kind of get a better understanding on how Kafka's mind worked. Because when Kafka transformed into Kaiju number eight, we saw that Kafka was taking the burden and taking every responsibility for himself. And here in a flashback, we get an idea of where that came from because we see a young Kafka and Mina discussing what they're going to do in the defense force when they're working together. Because during that conversation, Kafka goes on ahead and tells Mina that he will be a master blade wielder and that he will be the most strongest sniper and he will have his battle suit to be 99% and he will kill 10,000 kaijus and he will be the top soldier of the whole country of Japan, while Mina looks at him like, boy, you are such a child and you're such a dumbass. Work. Mina's whole case is that she wants to go on ahead and make sure that she saves a lot of lives, that when she goes on action into the battlefield, that no one will die. Everyone will survive minus the kaijus because she will go on ahead and save families, pets, kids, anybody that's a human or a loved one that you care about will survive while the kaijus will be the only thing that will die. So we go back into the present where we see that Mina and Kafka are actually having a conversation about the situation, their past self, and how much that they changed. Because the conversation started as Mina calls Kafka a liar. And she said that you said that you would have catch up right away. I thought that you would never make it. As Kafka is dumbfounded and he cannot believe that this is the first thing that Mina says to him after he rescued her and vice versa. So, of course, Kafka apologized as a gentleman as he is, and he says, my bad, as him and Mina actually have a discussion about Kafka and his own actions, because she says that you were trying to handle things on your own, weren't you? As Kafka cannot lie, as he admits that he was trying to do things all by himself, but Reno goes on ahead and make him realize that he needed help that he needs to rely on his teammates and that his teammates actually have his back and that that kind of like changed Kafka's viewpoints and his mind structures because in the beginning of the chapter, we saw how Kafka, how his mindset was that he will be like, you know, the only person that kind of will be like the number one person and he will be like unstoppable. He will be a master, especially too, since he's able to transform to Kaiju number eight. And throughout this whole arc, we see that Kafka is trusting his teammates. Kafka is relying on his teammates. He doesn't have to be Superman and try to save everyone. And he trusts his teams that they will get the job done. And so here, that's what he was explaining to Mina. And he also stated that he has changed. He says that the person that he is now is not the one that I have suspected. As Mina also says that I haven't been able to become the adult that I admire either because she starts to remember the time when she almost got absorbed by Kaiju number nine, that all of these dead soldiers that was underneath her feet. And they realized that the promises that they have made, they really couldn't complete it because Kafka, he couldn't be the sword or blade wielder. And of course, going to his combat suit to like 99%, he couldn't actually achieve that. And with Mina, she couldn't actually was able enough to go on ahead and try to make sure that every mission that she goes, all the people that she was trying to save will actually live because some of those people actually did die. But they said that they had to continue on moving forward, even though they didn't admire or achieve or become the people that they had admired, they had to continue on moving forward, which prompted Kaiju number nine and Kaiju number two to charge towards them which Mina goes on ahead and tell Kafka, thank you. And thank you for being there by my side. As Kafka realized that he's able to achieve one of the promises that he has made, and that is to fight along on with Mina to go on ahead and take down these Kaijus. As we see the two best friends are about to go on ahead 
and fight against their number one enemy, Kaiju number nine, with the power of Kaiju number two. As the chapter ends, as that Kaiju is charging towards them, and Mina and Kafka, the two childhood friends, are about to go on ahead and fight against their number one ops. And that's just pretty much what we got from the latest chapter of Kaiju number eight, which was very solid because we get more development between Kafka and Mina because we rarely get to see them interact. And with this chapter, we are able to see them interact with each other and actually communicate towards each other. But other than that, that's just pretty much what we got from this latest chapter of Kaiju number eight. Let me know down in the comment section how you guys feel about this latest chapter, what's your thought process, theories, and all what's going to happen in the next couple of chapters. And if you guys do like the video, hit the like and subscribe button. And remember, always be decent. This is the Monotone Man. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and be safe out here. Peace.